You're listening to LibraryCast with me, Jeremy Thompson-Smith, from Somerset Libraries, bringing to you Libraries from Home. On this week's LibraryCast, we visited Street in Somerset, where Somerset Libraries Mobile Library visited on August the 17th, whilst the Street Community Library was closed for a refit. I caught up with some of the readers, the team and the council, the parish council, to find out what is going on and what makes the vibrant Community Street Library tick. Welcome to LibraryCast. So we're down here on day one of Street's mobile library that's visiting Street while the parish council rooms where Street Library is is being refitted. And I'm joined by Claire Axton from Parish Council and Chair of Friends of Street Library. Day one, Claire, how's it been going so far? Well, it's just wonderful to see the library van here um, because it's been hard not having anything and we're so pleased that people can come to the library van and find some books and uh, just see that things are still happening. You've been heavily involved in keeping a very popular presence of librarians, libraries and readers coming into the library. The last year has been difficult, hasn't it? But do you see optimism for the future? What is the plan for the library within Street? Well, it just is unreal, really, because we spent so long fighting to keep our library. The parish council, we stepped in at the last minute, found a home for it, and then we've moved it on so that now the whole building is being changed, walls coming down, making it a fit place for the library and the parish council, which is very exciting. And we're well into that project, and then suddenly COVID hits, and everything changes again. But we do see in the future we're a very optimistic bunch we have a huge number of friends of street library and also volunteers a really strong set of volunteers who support the library assistants uh, in all the work that they're doing so getting the mobile library into street for the interim of the refit how difficult challenge was that for you Well, to be honest, we just have to say thank you to Somerset County Council, Emma Mercer and her team, because they are the ones who did that. We thought it would be a step too far because we were going to have a temporary library in a shop unit and have to also thank Chris Davis from Clark's Village, who has been amazing. He's storing all our books and all our parish equipment at the moment. We were going to have one of the shops, but of course COVID stopped that, and then... Emma and her team from Somerset said, well, the mobile library can come once a fortnight, and that's brilliant. What sort of ideas would you have that the library service could adopt in either events or how we move the libraries forward to bring in not just the existing loyal visitors, but also a new memberships to the library? What can we do? Well, the Friends of Street Library usually put on craft events and things like that for the children. Obviously that's difficult, but we're working at the moment with the Crispin Community Centre and they're doing breakfast once a week and craft activities that children can take away and we're helping them every Wednesday, uh, which is really great. And we advertise the, the uh, summer reading challenge at that event. Before the lockdown, we had some young people from the YMCA come in and advise us on the virtual area of the new library. And we want to really continue that link because it is absolutely vital that they want to come to our new library. It's not going to be huge, but we are wanting to provide facilities for all ages and all ranges of people. What are you reading at the moment? I'm actually reading a book by Lucy Worsley on Jane Austen. It's um, so well written. She researches everything so well. So while I'm reading that, I'm also reading Pride and Prejudice again. I asked Claire Axton what she thought the libraries needed to do to change for the future, for future generations. 
Well, libraries have got to change. Um, you know, it's no longer people coming in and borrowing DVDs and that sort of thing. There's all the online presence and that's really important, but it is also important for people that they can put a real book in their hands, for children to have that amazing opportunity in that wonderful world of real books that they can hold and look at the pictures and hear the stories read. And for all of us, yes, it's great to have all the electronic reading and I use that too, but it is also nice to have books. So we need to keep that balance as we go into the future. So Chair of Friends of Street Library, do you need any more help and how can people get in contact with you if they wish to lend a hand, either in volunteering or supporting the council's support of the mobile library and the parish council's library rooms when they reopen? Well, the parish council has a website and Facebook pages. Friends of Street Library have Facebook pages. So if you look for them, look for the parish council. There are links that go across and the parish council is very active here. And so get in touch there and you'll be put in touch with the right people for whatever you'd like to do. And yes, please, we always want people to volunteer. We also, as a parish council, want to hear people's views about things so that we can represent truly the people of street. So we have the mobile library outside the old library, but beautifully painted in happy pink. Claire Axton, thank you for joining us from Parish Council, Friends of Street Library. Thank you very much. So I'm joined by Angela, the Secretary of Friends of Street Library. It's day one in the sunshine today, and you were just popping past, weren't you? Yes. How's it yes. looking today? Oh, it's beautifully sunny, and I've just come down to support the, the library because the mobile library is here in the street for the first time today. So I decided I'd come along and show a bit of solidarity. I must, don't very rarely talk about what people are wearing, but you're, you go very much with the library van with the colours today. I know, I know I'm colour coordinated it with is. a sort of cerise colour jacket. We're yes. going to have to get you to help out and work on the <laughs> mobile library when we come back in two weeks. I'd love to. <laughs> You'll be to. very welcome. <laughs> So you're involved with the history, you were telling me, yes, of, the, yes, of the library and you work very closely with the Clarks family. Tell us a little bit about that. Right, well um, for a long, long time I've worked for Richard Clark who, who is a trustee of the various trusts which support organisations in street, one of which is the library, the Street Library Trust. And I've worked for him for 15 years. And in that time, I've, I've gathered together, um, I've, I've absorbed from Richard a lot of the history of street as well as the history of the library. And whenever something interesting crossed my desk, I thought, that's interesting, I'll keep a copy of that. So I've built up quite, a, quite an extensive knowledge of the things in street. And so one of the things I've been doing during this lockdown period is sending out each, every few days, a piece about the history of, of the library. And then I followed that by history of the street. And I'm still continuing that at the moment. At the moment, I'm doing a history of concealed shoes in buildings. So that's where I am at the moment. What sort of things have you discovered in your research of street libraries? Well, when I first became involved with the Friends of Street Library, I'd never been upstairs in our library building across the way here, which was actually built in 1924. I'd never seen the older bits of the library. Um, I, years, Many years ago, I did, I did go into the little cottage alongside, because that used to be... The, uh, the the accommodation for the librarian in those days, but um, that hasn't that that's been not been used for that purpose for a long long time. It's just been used for storage, so it kind of had a charm all all of its own. Because up upstairs you can see um, the the wallpaper on the walls of the family that lived there then, and the, and the child's room, you know, and so and we used to use those rooms to store our cups and saucers that we would use for tea parties and coffee mornings and things like that that we raise money for the for the library so yeah so it's it's a very charming building built in 1924 by William Stevens Clark who's responsible for an awful lot of the buildings in street this one right beside us Crispin Hall which is another trust Crispin Hall Trust and um, also the meeting house down the road and a lot of the a lot of the houses in the street, which were workers' houses, houses just opposite Greenbank Pool down here, which is another one of the trusts, Greenbank Pool Trust, and the houses in that road were built for the people who worked at Clark's in the 19th century, and and into the early 20th century. So it's a, the street has got a tremendous amount of history. And whilst I've been doing this and sending out pieces each day to the Friends of Street Library, I've learned an awful lot. And I've, I sent away for some books. 
and it just goes on and on. <laughs> so I've really enjoyed myself. Mm. So I haven't felt locked down at all. It's a great way to read, isn't it? And yes. To learn more. Yes. I've just noticed as well you said that you are the secretary of Friends of Street Library. Yeah. How important is Friends of Street Library to supporting the community library in Street? It's, it's very important now because our chairman, Claire Axton, who's a parish councillor, has been instrumental in getting the building work um, started in the, in the street parish rooms, which is going to extend the space which is available for use of the library. So that, the Friends of Street Library has, has supported that and, and it's in the partnership with Somerset County Council and, and um, Street Parish Council to, to carry on that work for the future. And how do you see the future of the library, the community library in the street? What would you like to see happen in the future? In the long term, I'd like to see the library going back to its old home across the road there in the building that dates from 1924, but we really don't know about that at the moment. Angela, Secretary of Friends of Street Library, thank you so much for joining us. On You're welcome. Page. In between choosing and selecting books for our readers, I managed to have a quick chat with our very own mobile library driver for Somerset Libraries, Kenny. What's it been like on day one for the mobile library in Street? It's been very good. We've had a few people coming back, returning their books. We've been picking some orders out. We've been making sure that they know what to do for next time, going onto the internet, making their book requests. So, so far, so good. First hour done. I always uh, am in awe of you. We were working together Last, last year, 2019, in Cheddar, when you came down during the refit there. And I'm also in awe of how you drive down these roads, on these small roads, but you've been parked so perfectly outside the parish rooms, behind the Crispin Centre. You've got to be a good driver, haven't you, to get yourself in the right place, looking out for health and safety of people so there's, everyone is safe. How do you learn to drive a mobile library for someone like me that is a rookie that wants to start? I've got an HGV2 license, so you get plenty of training. The most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, when parking in tight spaces like here, is about using your mirrors. I think that that's an art that's probably not taught enough when people go out and drive their cars, but if you can see it in your mirror, it's going to be there for you to hit it, so you should be able to move away from it. It's all about the mirrors. I'm watching you to describe you to our listeners. You would never have thought in 2019 that you will be out with the mobile library wearing a mask and surgical gloves. It is different, isn't it? It's very different. And I think, you know, this is going to be here for some time to come. The virus isn't going to go away and we just need to be very vigilant and, and carry on protecting ourselves and protecting ourselves from others and others from us. So... Today you've been uh, selecting books for visitors to the mobile library in the street. What sort of books have been borrowed today? We've had some large print historical books. We've had an autobiographical book go out on Virginia Woolf. We've had some crime, general crime fiction selected. They didn't mind what they were so long as they felt that they hadn't read them before. So it's our job to try and pick out books for um, the borrowers when they come here as near to what they actually require if we can't actually find the book. Do you get anyone that hoots you as you're driving with little kids waving at you when you're on the road? No, the it's stop? usually 42 ton juggernauts telling me to get out of the way. <laughs> well, we like you in the way today, in the street, <laughs> outside the rooms. We'll see you in two weeks. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Us. Also visiting the mobile library in Street was Jenny, the Assistant Parish Council Clerk for Street Parish Council. So day one, it's gone smoothly so far, but Great. it must have taken a lot of work to get today to uh, actually happen. I think, if anything, the, the hardest thing was to find a central place for it to go, and we were very lucky that Crispin Hall agreed for us to have it behind here, because we all work very closely together. And um, I think it's perfect, brilliant situation. Yeah. So we're parked up here and it's day one. It's going to be a few more weeks, isn't mm -hmm. it, running through to the end of October yeah. for the library coming. What can we do as a team, Somerset Libraries, yeah. Street Parish Council, to get more people to visit the mobile library? Well, uh, the Parish Council, it's on their website and their social media pages. So we highlight that and we've had lots of interest over the weekend because we had some uh, scheduled posts set. So um, hopefully it's just 
getting out there and making sure that people know that it's here, when it's here, and how long it's here before you know the new one opens. So very exciting, isn't it? You presumably have got a sort of a exclusive preview of the plans mm, for, yes. for it. What's it going to look like? How can you describe the new library when it opens? Um, much more user friendly, very community based, easy access. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good, good, good for the community. And how important is the library to street, do you think? Very important. And it's not just the street, it's surrounding areas that, that use our library, um, like the villages and things like that. So yeah, it's very important that it's, it's still here. At a quiet moment, I managed to speak with one of my colleagues and I asked her how it's been going. So, Anna, from the Community Library of Street, it's day one. Is this the first day you've been serving the public since lockdown? Since March, this is the first day that we've been back working. Um, it's been lovely to see people, um, have a conversation, see our regular customers and a few that we haven't seen before. So it's been really good so far. I guess they have definitely missed you but you've missed your readers as well oh you? most definitely yeah we can't wait to go back to work properly yeah so online stuff that we put on street library are amazing uh, with stories that you've put on there you've got a couple of really good storytellers from your colleagues we have um so that will continue won't it you're not going to give up on the stories from the you've got a grandma we have Who's yeah we got we got gangster granny which is jackie um kirsty's our storyteller as well um we keep on at her constantly to do stories which she absolutely loves doing so yeah look out for some more of those in the near future great so today in the mobile library it's it's better than not having a library here have you got used to it it's been quite cool working with kenny today, most definitely it? yeah yeah we didn't know whether or not we'd be able to give out physical books to people but kenny's been brilliant um so people have actually had books to take away today and of course they can fill in the online form or take a hard copy of the form to bring back to us and then myself and jackie will be picking some books next he, week kenny makes it look so easy doesn't he he's on the shelf he, he does knows what every single book is he does and when i helped him <laughs> he's in the background there <laughs> stacking the shelves with books he is a professional librarian isn't he, he is very professional in yeah. surgical gloves and, exactly and boots, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in good humor today it's been a kind of an almost a celebration we're finally out there with our readers. definitely yeah definitely and yeah we're glad to be back do you think that uh, our readers have got used to this new way of order and collect how do you think that's going to be for the future when when you, the library the mobile library comes back yeah no i think they definitely ha will get used to the order collect but a lot of our um readers this morning that we found out have been using the online service an awful lot so the cloud library app and the borrow box app have been widely used so i asked anna what's the process for bringing back books as well as choosing books the next time visitors come to the library the mobile library Basically, on the table in front of the library van, there's a box. All the reader needs to do is put the box it, books into the box. Um, and we'll pack all that away. Um, we just or Kenny will just charge them when he goes back to a um, Torton library, and they'll come off um, their the reader's cards within three days. The books are then quarantined for 72 hours anyway so they're sanitized and everything and if they do want to take away some books then kenny's brilliant and he's choosing books for people or helping them choose and um, they've got a hard copy form like i said before that they can take away or go online for the click and collect so there's lots of options it's great to be back isn't it it is very much so we'll do it all again in two weeks brilliant <laughs> no problem so you can find out more information about streets mobile library by visiting the street community library facebook page or by visiting Streets Parish Council's very own webpage. So the next time the Mobile Library visits Street will be on August the 17th, and it will be parked outside the Crispin Centre, right next to where the Community Library of Street is currently based, having its refit by the Parish Council rooms. You can't miss it. You've been listening to LibraryCast with me, Jeremy Thompson-Smith, bringing to you Libraries from Home.